All right, this time I was wanted to talk about LIIs. They've been um, just popping up on my mind lately. And part of that's because Socionics is going to be full of them. Really, typology in general is full of them. These are the researchers, the nerds, the probably the, the uber nerds of all typology. Very important types that are usually the ones that create typology systems in the first place. Um, but it can come at a certain cost. So one of the things that these guys have that just, it just pops up to me lately, this combination of T, I, and N, E, when you look at them or listen to them, they dive deep. That's what the T, I is really doing. It's diving deep into a subject that they're interested in. And they're going to do a lot of research. They're going to start gathering more and more and more data, more info, more viewpoints, more stuff to support the research of what it is that they're interested in. This is really all it comes down to. So how do you spot one? Well, here's an example that I saw that I just came across. Take a look at this guy right here. Now, I love history. So I'm more than interested to see what this guy has put together on Stalingrad. But check this guy out. Look at his wall. Look at that background. This guy is doing some serious thing on Stalingrad or whatever. Okay. How many books on Stalingrad does this guy have? Look at that. What? One, two, three, four, five. There's like six or seven more of them up here. There's a couple more over here. There's probably a few more behind him. This is, this is an INTP for you in action. It's not enough to them to just study something and read a couple of books that give you the idea, focus on something, and then move on. It's not about necessarily, necessarily studying the entire war or the history, the vast history of combat and different types of combat and all the different things that go into it. No, no, here's a guy who obviously has some fascination with Stalingrad and is studying the shit out of it to the point where he needs about 20 different books from 20 different sources that he can just comb through that shit so that he can make his little series on this one battle in history, a battle that now is over 70 years old. And you start to question what is the relevance of studying such a battle in such depth at this point? Why does it matter? I don't know. As rusted typology guy would say, it almost makes this person look almost like an obsessive autistic. No offense to anybody. I'm not, I'm using this very lightly. Okay. So not trying to offend anybody with any issues. Okay. But you're getting my point. The massive obsession for one singular topic that they have to just deep dive into for some reason and just go on and on and on and on and it's like it's never enough to have one or two sources it's got to be 25 sources and they feel the need that all of them are important they all have to be mentioned they all have to be brought up every one of them gives you something i guess uh and it keeps going and that's what you notice with them and that's usually where other types probably sfps usually which is the kind of their opposite other types are going to get frustrated because they're just sitting there going, when are we going to actually do something? What is the point of this? Where are we moving on to? Why are we spending inevitable, all this time just researching the shit out of something? How many books is enough? How many times do I have to read about the same thing just from some other guy's point of view? But it's the same shit. What are we doing? And it's on and on and on and on. The typology world, you'll see the same stuff. I notice it a lot because a lot of of LIIs in there who are constantly trying to revise the system. They're trying to revise the system and make more stuff, or they're trying to combine it with somebody else's system. They're trying to take four other typing systems and then see how they can merge it all. And they're just like relentless, relentlessly trying this all the time. And you can't stop them. You can't tell them, no, it's, you know, we're good enough. It's just fine right here. No, they're going to keep on reading more and reading more and trying to create those combinations. What practical value does it have? Who knows? 
this is part of the reason why the LII's also struggle to then like get anything done because they're spending so much time, like just drilling on one topic on one thing that it's like, they never actually get up and, and like do anything practical and productive. They don't get moving with that. What is the overall practical benefit to studying the battle of Stalingrad in such incredible detail? Well, you know, hopefully in like that guy's case, he is a historian. This is what he does. He was going to write a few books of his own. He puts a series together that he markets and sells, whatever. And he becomes an expert on that particular battle at that particular thing. And that's it. He's a master of his one particular field. If you're interested in that field, then he might be useful to you. And if not, it doesn't matter, right? This is pretty much what you find with most LIIs, a master of a particular field and area that they really have specialized in and that's kind of about it All right so just uh something to kind of like go into uh, you know these guys also unfortunately they because they're such deep dive people and they're, they're just so focused on what they're doing they often have a very hard time understanding what it is other people are interested in what they're looking for they have a hard time condensing that information and making it into something simple for for people to get so a big problem with them is that whenever you talk to them nothing is ever a short and simple conversation it always has to be this long 25 book explanation about everything it just you can't, they don't simplify, they complicate things. And that's kind of their big issue. So certain types, probably really all the gammas uh, in particular are just going to lose their minds because all the gammas want to get productive and get after stuff. To them, they're like, what are we going to do with this? I need to know enough of this to now make it useful and get moving. But if we're constantly just drilling deeper and researching more and trying to complicate more and uncovering, more, then we never get up and get moving on anything because we're just digging and digging and digging. So that might be the way that you see LIIs. It might irritate the hell out of you a lot or maybe just a little. Um, but it's to me probably one of the surefire ways of knowing that you're dealing with an LII, that person that is researching the crap out of something and can never just limit their conversation to something simple. It has to just keep spreading out to more information and more information. And then let's bring up that book. And the doctor so-and-so said that. Doctor so-and-so said this. This guy said that. That guy said that. You know. Um, so hopefully, uh, you know, that helps you spot them. Have some idea what you're doing with them and so on. Uh Again, I still love them. They're still useful. These are guys that, again, do all this kind of research. They're the guys who usually come up with these typing systems, like Victor Galenko. So they kind of give us a lot of this framework to deal with. But just know that they can also be very irritating because they just, they never stop. They keep trying to overcomplicate stuff. Right? So let me know what you think, what your experience is with LIIs.